All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be working on this 5.3 liter Vortec V8. This is an LC9 RPO, and what we're going to be talking about is maintenance. Now, if you look at the owner's manual, this particular engine is in a 2013 Avalanche. And normally, when you go through the maintenance, we would be talking about the 97,500 mile maintenance, and the thing we would be talking about is replacing and inspecting spark plugs and spark plug wires. But this particular engine, this is like wishful thinking. And as we go through this video, you'll understand why. So what I'm going to tell you is, for sure, in the owner's manual, definitely replace the plugs at 97,500, but inspect them more often than not. Um, you want to inspect them around 32,500, every 32,500. And the reason you want to do that is this engine has something called AFM, or active fuel management, and it suffers from a problem of oil consumption and the oil consumption can often lead to fouling the plugs. So let's go through the regular maintenance like any other engine and then let's talk about the unique problem that this particular 5.3 liter Vortec can have. Alright guys we're going to take a look at the 2013 GM service manual for the CK trucks, uh, Avalanche, Suburban Tahoe as well as the GMC Yukon and the Cadillac Escalade. And as far as this LC9 RPO 5.3 liter Engine that we've got, spark plug replacement, pretty straightforward. Twist the spark plug boot a half turn in order to release it in case it's gotten seized up on the ceramic, and then pull it off to remove it. We're going to go ahead and blow out any debris before we pull the plug out, and then we're going to remove the plug. After we get the plugs replaced, we're going to go back and retorque them to 11 foot pounds or 15 newton meters. Another important thing do not touch the gap on these AC Delco plugs. I'll show you that when we get ready to put them in. They should be pre-gapped right out of the box, and we, we don't need to adjust them. Now, if we find out they're wrong, then of course we can, but we shouldn't have to because they should be pre-gapped. Sometimes what can happen is they can fall down off the shelf if you buy them off a retail situation or even if you buy them online, and it can sometimes change the gap. The other thing that's um, useful to note on here, let's see if they say it here. Yeah, this is something that's good to note too, right? So you want to... Um, they talk about the inside of the ignition coil side of the boot. This is this part on the top, but I recommend this for the spark plug side as well, having a thin coat of dielectric grease. So you should really do it on both ends because it does two things. It keeps water out and it also makes it easier to remove when it comes time to doing what we're about to do here. You don't want to have a lot on here and this is not a conductive material. This is an, something to keep things lubricated so they don't seize up the rubber to the ceramic but also to keep water out. So you're going to see me put this dielectric grease on the plug end of this as well on the boot. Alright guys, simple procedure but worth taking a walk through. So just like the service manual indicates, we're going to give these boots a twist and then we should be able to wiggle them off. There we go. The important thing is to give them a twist because what can happen is the electrode can get seized up inside there if we zoom in or ceramic gets, can get seized up inside there as well. Alright, so we're just going to go do the same thing on the other four. Give them a twist and work them off and then we'll come back. Alright guys, so I got all these four off on the driver's side. Just wanted to make sure I showed you something over here. So when you're pulling these, make sure you pull on the metal here and the rubber and not on the wire, right? Don't pull on the wire. Grab on the metal and the rubber here and pull on that. You can wiggle it and you can do whatever you need to do to get it to let go, but don't pull on the wire. All right, so now we've got these off. We're going to take a, uh, a 5 8 spark plug wrench and we're going to get these plugs out. You want to use a spark plug wrench because it's going to have a little rubber grommet on top that will hold the plug as you remove it. Now these really should come off with hand tools. I don't ever use anything electric on plug, uh, spark plugs or glow plugs just because you want to make sure that you can use your sensation to tell if something's going wrong. You know, it's possible for these things to get broken off in the head and stuff like that. You just don't want to have to deal with that with power tools. All right, I'm just going to show you the first one here. So we got this guy out. And so the deal with these kind of plugs is Right, so it, it'll hold it because it's got some piece of rubber up in top here. So we're going to take all these plugs out and inspect them. We can see this one's got a little bit of oil around it, but not too surprising. This type of engine has the uh, AFM where it disables certain cylinders while you're driving. So 
You can sometimes get that. We're going to pull these other ones out and I'll show what we're putting in their place. So the owner's manual recommends that we use these spark plugs here, 41110. But these have actually been discontinued. I'll show you the ones they've been replaced with that we're actually going to be using going forward. All right, guys, what we're going to be putting in here in place of the old ones are AC Delco 41162s. It's a GM 1941-7055. This takes the place of the ones in the owner's manual, which I believe were 41110s that are discontinued now. So this is the correct plug you should be using. Like we saw in the service manual, all we're going to do, we're not going to you know, touch the gap on these. We're just going to kind of spot check them for 40 thousandths. So we're just going to combine a 30 and a 10 here. And we're going to make sure that that snugly fits in between the two pieces. We're going to do that to each of the four before we put them back in. And then we'll take a look at the old ones. All right, guys, we got three of these in and finished. I'll show you this one that's going in right here because it's the best camera view. It's going to start it inside of our socket by hand. And you want to do these started by hand because it's a steel plug threading into an aluminum head. So you don't want to get it cross threaded. So you just thread it in by hand until it's nice and snug and only then switch to hand tools. So she's got quite a bit of travel, but now she's starting to get a little tight. All right, so now she's good to put the torque wrench on, and now we'll torque her up to the 11 foot-pounds that was specified in the service manual. Then after this, you put some dielectric grease on here. You don't have a lot of room to travel, but fortunately, 11 foot pounds you don't need a lot. So on this one it's not a very loud click. I don't know if you guys can hear that but we are at the 11 foot pound mark with that position right there. Then we're going to come in here with some GMAC Delco silicone grease, dielectric silicone grease, part 1234 5579. We're actually going to put this on by hand. I'll show you why in a minute. But we're going to smear this around the sides of the ceramic top half of the plug. And the reason we're doing that is on these style of connectors, we've got the spring here. It's a little bit hard to get the tube of the dielectric to fit down in here, so we just put it on by hand. And when you put the plug back on, you just want to make sure you get an audible click and a tactile feel back. You guys aren't going to be able to hear it on camera, but she's popped on. All right, let's go do the passenger side. All right, guys, taking a look at the passenger side, same kind of deal, right? You got one there, you got two, you got three, and you got your fourth one back there. So I'm not necessarily going to film getting these out. It's the same deal as we did on the driver's side. Half a twist, wiggle and pull, and then pull the plugs. We'll get these out, and we'll take a look at what they all look like. All right, guys, just real quick, I'm going to show you, you know, sometimes these plug boots can get stuck on here, particularly if you're up in a northern climate where you're in the salt belt. And so you might want to come in here with a pair of hose pliers, and you can grab the metal part, not the rubber part, but you can grab the metal part along this groove. If I can get this uh, coolant hose out of the way. And that's another way you can use to get some leverage. So you can grab this guy. Don't squeeze him too hard because the metal's not too thick here. You can crush it. And then you can also reach your hand in and pull on the rubber piece. And between the two, you can get enough leverage to get it to let go. Ready? Yep. All right, guys, for this last plug closest to the firewall on the passenger side, I find it's easier just to come up from underneath to get it started because the, the hole's really hard to see from up on top without you know, putting unnecessary pressure on hoses and wiring harnesses. So just come up from underneath, and that way you're not poking around blindly where you might ac accidentally, you know, change the gap on the plug. So just get it kind of started from down here, and then you can come back around on top and put your wrench into the socket and finish it off and torque it down. All right, guys, if we consult the service manual again, we look under spark plug wire inspection. This is all pretty routine stuff that you want to check here. We just want to make sure there's no tearing, no damage to the boot, the rubber boot part, no corrosion on that metal shield that you see around it. 
and no dents or bends on that metal shield. And you also want to make sure that there's no signs of burning on the wire itself, which could be evidence that it's got compromised and you got some carbon left there from where it's arcing outside of the of the wire. You know, it can come out it can come to a point where the wire is actually jumping a spark to the engine rather than through the spark plug. So this is pretty routine stuff. What we're going to mostly focus on over here is spark plug inspection. There's a lot of routine stuff on here too, and I won't go through all of it, but I'll hold this camera here. You can read it for yourself. But on these LC9 Vortec V8s, we're going to be focusing mostly on spark plug fouling. And not for the reasons they say, but because of this AFM side effect. But there's some basic stuff you can check for damage. You want to make sure that the electrode is not burned off here, part number three. You want to make sure that the white ceramic that you'll see on the plug around the electrode here is not cracked or chunks of it missing. You want to make sure that the ceramic up here that they call number two is also not cracked and not showing any missing chunks or broken off pieces. And you want to check for corrosion up here in the top piece here that makes the contact with the piece inside the wire that actually supplies the electricity for the spark. If you turn the page over here, they have some other stuff they talk about in terms of what to check for. And again, you know, this is all routine stuff, right? Checking for cracks, checking for arcing over here, checking the gap. You know, just if the things went in with the correct gap, there can be problems that could result in them having the wrong gap as the electrode maybe wears off and bends off and away. What we're looking at for these problems, though, with AFM is oil contributing to fouling. So you get excess oil in the ignition side of the cylinder and it contributes to fouling of the plug. So let's take a look at the plugs we pulled out and then let's take a look at some service bulletins and get into more detail on this. So interestingly enough this is from front to back. We pulled a Bosch out of the front then we've got six AC Delcos and we've got an NGK stuck in the back and I'm not sure why the owner had this kind of like grab bag of leftover plugs but we've got them all replaced with what they should be now. The, the one in the front here, we can see, does have evidence of fouling, right? So that's what that, if you zoom in here, that's what that black, tarry looking material is. And that could be why this one plug was replaced different. This one's got some, but is closer to normal. This one here, again, very similar to the one we just looked at. This one in the back, though, has the tarring situation again. There's also this white powdery material on the electrode itself. If you feel it, it's like kind of like a deposit on it. It's kind of hard. You can peel it off. So something definitely going on there. If we look at the other side, you know, fairly normal on this guy. Fairly normal on this guy. Fairly normal on this guy. Sometimes you get these little burns on the ceramic. That's no big deal. And this guy here has just a little bit of that black so it's not really sure maybe this was replaced recently the, you know the previous owner did do this the person that has this now just recently bought this truck a couple of months ago so I'd be keeping an eye on these two cylinders is what I'll tell the owner right we want to see why we're seeing this but right now it's not throwing any codes everything's running fine so out of all these plugs the two we're concerned about is cylinder one and cylinder seven because these are both exhibiting oil contributing fouling of these plugs and the other one we're going to watch is cylinder 8, because we don't know why the previous owner stuck this NGK in there. But what we think is going on here is that the owner was managing the problem that comes as a side effect with AFM by just rotating out plugs. He probably was getting a misfire on cylinder 1, and to cure that problem, he stuck this Bosch plug in there. I suspect he was probably getting a misfire on cylinder 8, so he stuck this NGK plug in there. So we swapped them all out, got them all fresh with AC Delco 41162s, and we'll monitor the problem now. But let's talk a little bit about why these plugs on cylinder 1 and 7 are exhibiting kind of a, an expected result. So there's a service bulletin that uh, applies to these engines, right? So we're at the last year of the Avalanche, and that's the last part of the range. And, and this is only specific to certain L, um, RPO engines, right? And so LC9, which is the engine we've got here, which is an aluminum block V8, that has AFM is one of the ones affected by this. And there's several others you can look at here. And there's a couple of problems in this range. There's a set of problems that happened in the earlier side, and there's a set of problems that happened in the middle side, and there's a set of problems that happened to all three. The main thing is oil consumption. And, I, you know, you guys, I'll go slowly like this. You can kind of read it yourself. But 
the key thing is if you go down through here, they talk about this oil consumption being caused by two conditions. Oil through the PCV system that's discharged from the AFM pressure valve in the crankcase. And then the other thing they talk about is that you can end up with, um, when you're running the engine um, at very high speed operation, so you're at the kind of high end of the tolerance specifications, this oil spray can be higher and it can cause deposit formation in the piston ring grooves. And this ends up clogging those up and you get increased oil consumption. The cracked or fouled plugs are one and seven, right? So we think about that. That's the two that we've got exhibiting the problem. So it's very indicative of what the service bulletin talks about. The older ones had a correction of swapping out the valve covers. And so certainly I'd make this aware to you, but certainly by the time this video is being done, everybody should have done this by now. But basically, uh, 2007 to 2008 have one type of valve cover, and then there's another one for 09 to 11. This being a 13, this problem doesn't apply to. It would have come from the factory with this corrective valve cover for the PCV problem. As far as the piston ring issue, they go through uh, a cleaning procedure and there's a particular type of upper end and fuel injection cleaner. It's a chemical. There's the part number there, 8886-1803. Canada has a different number and you put that in the cylinder, you let it soak for two and a half to three hours and then you got to obviously have the plug out and then you got to crank the engine over with out letting it start without the plugs in there to blow all this stuff out so you don't hydro lock it. Then you put your plugs back in and that's supposed to you know correct this problem at least temporarily. Obviously it's going to come back. It's still not a permanent repair. But those are, are the two things that they talk about. And the rest of this manual goes around other things to check. Earlier engines would be missing this AFM shield around the AFM valve that's mounted in the in the oil pan. And again this is a 2013 one so it's going to have this shield. So that's not something that applies to what we're seeing and this also get into um, some of the things that you would do on the cast iron versions of these engines right so the LC9 that we've got is an aluminum one but there's an iron block as well but it's basically the same kind of thing you're going to take this chemical and you're going to try to clean uh, clean off the um, rings on the piston and you're going to redo the spark plugs now this is one of these kind of things for which there's just no fix for these are all just mitigations uh, fortunately, this kind of problem is limited, to, just like the uh, service bulletin says, it's limited to oil consumption. So the only real bad side effect is this overconsumption of oil fouls the plugs prematurely. And so that's why in the beginning of the video, I suggest you check all the plugs every 32,500 miles. And if you got this kind of problem, then you can get a head start on it. You also want to watch the oil in these engines and not just trust the oil level uh, life on the on the driver information center to tell you when it's time to change the oil check it frequently because you're probably going to be burning it more than you would on a normal chevy small block anyway i hope all this information helps you out normally i wouldn't do a video on something as basic as swapping out spark plugs but for this particular engine it's not that basic and it's not that routine so i hope all this tech information helps you get the most out of your vortec v8 the 5.3 liter if you got questions or comments leave them below and i'll try to help if you found this video helpful or useful or taught you something or saved you some money, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.